What's up, YouTube? Yu-Gi-Oh! Tube here discussing the impact of PSA versus Ludkin's Collectibles. For those who don't know, Ludkin's Collectibles is a service where you submit a card or cards through them, and they take your cards, do all the work, send it off to PSA, and uh, the rest is taken care of. Now, PSA has officially banned Ludkin's Collectibles from submitting again. They've taken them off their dealer section of their website. Just keep in mind, though, Ludkin's Collectibles is supposedly both in the UK and the US. So there's a UK branch or whatever it is and a US location. Now, if you look here, PSA has suspended um, UK, okay, the UK Ludkin's Collectibles. I'm not sure. I assume the U.S. Ludkins Collectibles then is still fine. But again, that's kind of weird. You would think between the two now there's going to be some head bashing and some drama between the U.S. and the, and the PSA. I, I, I don't really know. The only thing I know is if you look on Google, you search PSA Ludkins. Here's the dealer right here, Lud Ludkins Collectibles in the U.K. Dealer not found. That is now gone. Okay, so basically what happened was PSA announced here on the 4th of November a big statement that Ludkins is no longer with PSA, not no longer able to work with PSA, and Ludkins actually on the 4th that night at 9.45 p.m. actually made a response to this. So a lot of people only heard about PSA's announcement, but Ludkins actually responded to this that same night so in this video we are going to talk about the impact and kind of just the drama of what's going on between both PSA and Ludkin so here's the PSA announcement it says to PSA UK collectors immediately it's discontinuing its relationship with Ludkin's collectibles um, now again it says here Ludkin's in quotes I assume the US version of Ludkin's collectibles is still free to, to submit uh, I'm not sure, though. I, I don't want to say anything with 100% certainty on that. Um, what's You really need to know, if you have cards with Ludkin's collectibles, you're probably nervous and scared right now. Um, long story short here, okay? PSA just said, hey, Ludkin's collectibles sent us all these cards from clients, from people like you and me, submitting to Ludkin's collectibles, and they take care of the rest. And what happened was Ludkin's Collectibles was unable to pay that bill. Sounds crazy, right? So Ludkin's Collectibles takes your cards, okay? You pay Ludkin's up front and say, hey, I want my P, or I want my, I don't know, Jinzo, uh, Pharaoh Servant, PSV 000, first edition Jinzo. I want that graded by Ludkin's Collectibles to send over to PSA. Fine. Then you have to pay Ludkin's Collectibles for the service that you want. So because it's a relatively expensive card, you'd probably go with the regular service. If it's something cheap, like I want my Lost Art Gemini Elf graded, uh, that you're going to go with the cheap service, the bulk value rate. You're going to send the money over to Ludkin's right away. And when it comes back to Ludkin's, Ludkins then ships it back to you. So let me just repeat for those who aren't sure exactly what I'm saying here. You have a Yu-Gi-Oh card. You submit it to, or I shouldn't say submit it, you send it to Ludkins Collectibles. Ludkins Collectibles then sends it over to PSA. Okay, you pay up front, the person with the card. You pay Ludkins right away. When it comes back from PSA, you've already paid, and now Ludkins just hands it over back to you, ships it back to you. The issue that occurred here, okay, was Ludkins got into crazy amounts of debt, okay, they did not have the money to pay PSA, which absolutely is crazy. PSA, remember, requires payment after the cards are graded. PSA does not request upfront fees, which is actually something to think about down the line to avoid this kind of nonsense PSA maybe down the line will actually require you to pay PSA up front for the cards which some people might not like because they never know when it's ever going to come back when the cards are going to turn around but that might be an option seeing as this turned out to be a disaster this happened once in the sports card world with a name Mark's Cards 
what happened was Mark's card said, I'm going to collect all your money that you're giving me to submit these cards. I'm going to try and invest it or speculate with your money elsewhere. And what happened, it blew up in their face. They don't have the money when the cards come back to pay PSA and they go bankrupt. Same situation happened here. Okay, so Ludkins took all these submitters money, okay, all these people who gave them cards and said, here's my cash, get it graded. Ludkins said, oh, well, it's going to be, you know, a decent turnaround time. It might be a little while. Let's throw this money somewhere else, okay? Let's throw this money somewhere else and try to make more money. And guess what happened? It blew up in their face as the, the card market cooled down. Now PSA says, we've got your cards here, Ludkins. We got them all graded. We got thousands of cards graded. Here's your bill. Ludkins says, I, I don't have the money. So basically what Ludkins did was use consumers' money who submitted cards to them, use their money, tried to leverage it somewhere else, didn't work out. They now don't have the money, the capital, to pay PSA's bill or debt. And as a result, Ludkins is in deep trouble. Um, PSA in this announcement said, for the folks who submitted cards through Ludkins, we are going to make every effort to give those cards back to their rightful owners. I don't know how in God's name PSA will ever do this. Okay, here it is. Our focus is now determining a safe path to return these cards to the rightful owners without Ludkins' involvement. I don't know how in God's name PSA is going to find each individual owner of each uh, of card. It's going to be a mess. It's going to take a lot of time. Um, at least PSA is is working on getting these cards to their collectors, okay? Um, instead of just kind of saying, we don't know what to do here. Um, so at least they're working on that. Good on PSA for doing that. Shame on Ludkins for leveraging people's money to try and make money elsewhere or use it to pay off other things. You need to take that money. When someone pays you money for something, you need to take that money Throw it into a an account, okay? Throw it into something and never touch it again until PSA comes back to you. Now, if PSA were to upcharge, okay, then I'm assuming, then the person who submitted the card to Ludkins, Ludkins would say, hey, by the way, buddy, your card got upcharged, another $200 to grade that Jinzo. Then I'm sure the card owner, the Jinzo owner, will pay Ludkins, who then pays PSA. Um, you know, it's inexcusable. It's absolutely inexcusable for someone to take your cards, take your money, then submit to PSA. PSA says, we're done. And you say, oh, I don't have the money anymore. That is crazy. You need to have that money stashed away untouched. If something were to go wrong like it did here, then you're not over leveraged. It's craziness. So nonetheless, this is their response. They kind of, uh, Ludkins UK kind of just went with the whole... Brexit and the COVID across the world, the pandemic, uh, PSA shifting to a private company, um, you know, and then of course they upcharge customers here. You see it in this, what, one, two, three, six line, seventh line. They upcharge customers. That's nothing new. PSA has always upcharged customers. This is not a new development at the time of grading. If they upcharge a customer, they upcharge a customer based on the value of the card after grading. I don't understand what they're trying what Ludkins here is trying to say aside from excuse 1, excuse 1, excuse 3, excuse 4, excuse 5. You know, whatever it might be, it, it's inexcusable that that Ludkins has, has is trying to make some sort of excuse to say, oh, this is why we spent all your money for the cards that you gave us. I mean, this is crazy, crazy craziness. Um, they talked about the rates going up, the grading fees. They talked about PSA shutdown, which I get it. Their business, Ludkin's business model is, we'll take your cards, we'll take your money, we'll submit to PSA. Once PSA shut down, they said that PSA said it's going to be very temporary, as we know, PSA was shut down for a very long time. Whether PSA said this or that, Ludkins, you can't over leverage yourself. I mean, that's your business model. I get it. And so now that PSA shut down, you can't get any more orders to come in and send off to PSA. So financially, it is a strain. I get it. But that's market conditions. And you can't go spending other people's cash on stuff that you can't afford. And when the bill comes, you're out of money. You got lint in your pocket. 
I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. So nonetheless, here, if you want to pause the video, here is all the excuses. Um, you know, it's it just excuse after excuse after excuse. This is just me, an individual, human being, just giving my opinion on this matter. I think this is all excuses. Maybe you think I'm wrong. Maybe you think I'm crazy. Maybe Ludkins is really good and you just, you think I'm nuts. Sure, but this is free speech and I'm just giving my opinion on this. This is no way meant to defame. This is no way meant to slander. What I'm saying is my opinions on what I'm seeing here. And I'm seeing there's a lot of, in my opinion, excuses that Ludkins is giving for spending other people's money that they gave them to eventually pay PSA. And that's the fact. The fact is, PSA said, here's your bill. Ludkins says, I can't afford it anymore. Where did that money go? I don't know. The fact is, there's a lot of drama between these two. I don't think this is the last you're going to hear of this issue. I think if you are submitting cards to other people to submit for you, make sure that you know who you're submitting with, which is crazy because Ludkins supposedly was one of the biggest ones. Make sure that the person's trustworthy. Make sure, okay, that you have a fine set agreement of what's going to happen when the cards come back and, and whatnot. So I, for those who don't know, I, I'll throw in a card or two. You know, I'll throw in some cards for other people depending on how many how many cards they have, what the price is, the service level, whatever it might be. I do charge an extra a uh, few shekels for my time and effort. But here's the thing. I do not charge up front. I wait until the grades come back because of upcharge potential. I wait until the grades come back. And then I say, okay, grades came back. Now you owe me. And what's the worst that happened? The person who submits through me doesn't have the money. That's fine. I mean, I have the card, right? So ideally, the person who submits through me wants to get me paid so they can get their card. It's just simple, right? Um, I do not accept the money up front. I say I'll take the card. I submit the card when it comes back and I get charged. That's when I tell the person, look, you, you got upcharged or look, it came back. This is the bill. They send me the money. Uh, I don't understand why Ludkins even collected the money up front because they actually had the collateral leverage of the card itself when it does come back, which is crazy. Um, I don't understand how Ludkins could lose all of this money. I, I just think it was poor choices that potentially were made. Nonetheless, uh, what do you guys think? What a mess. Um, until next time, Yu-Gi-Oh! Tube signing out.